In this tutorial I'd like to show you a very simple way to create an open container with MakerBot's MakerWare software. Now I own a MakerBot Replicator 1, the dual extruder one, um, but it should work on later versions as well as long as you are in MakerWare. You could see this as a tutorial on how to start using the advanced printing functions in MakerWare. You can see on screen that my version right now is 222.89. Um, it should work with previous versions. I don't think this specific trick works as well in Replicator G, that's the old software. But if you have a MakerBot and you have MakerWare, you should be able to follow all of this. Um, to get started, we of course need a 3D model of a little cup. And I'll go into Blender 3D to do that. We are now in Blender 3D, actually this is version 2.68. Um, what you see before you is basically the standard version of Blender and sort of the standard way it looks when you open it the first time. It always gives you this default cube. Now if we look at this cube you can see it's closed on all sides. This is very much a printable cube so we can use this as a base. Now if you want to make a cup in uh, a MakerBot for instance and you want the top to be open so it would be this cube but with an open top you would have to model both the outside and the inside of the cup I will show you really quickly if I go into edit mode in Blender I can extrude the top scale it down and extrude it down so this way it's very very obvious this is how you would normally create an open container in Blender 3D you would model both the outside wall this is the outside and the inside wall. That way the MakerWare or your 3D print software, whatever it is, knows how thick the outer wall should be. In this case, I want to use a trick. So I'm not going to do that in Blender at all. All I want, I'm going to undo everything, go back out of edit mode, is that default cube. This is going to be my base file. I'm not even going to set up the scale in Blender because right now it is the dimensions are two by two by two blender units that could be millimeters meters yards inches whatever and i'm not going to define in blender what it is i just want the shape of the cube everything else i'm going to do in MakerWare. so i will go file it is selected file export i'll export as an stl because it's a nicely printable file go to my desktop box.stl so you have to put the name in there it turns red in my case because there's already a box.stl on my desktop it's fine i can overwrite that one export stl we have the box now i want to do a second shape so i will delete the box and i want to make a round cup as well so that i have to do everything twice you can see what i'm doing i will add a cylinder the cylinder by default is pretty blocky you can see there's not that many points in the cylinder so it's not nice and round and smooth we can change the number of points at the left bottom of the 3d view down here i will make this a bit bigger these are the settings with which the cylinder was added and we can change it right after you add the cylinder so i can click and drag on here and make it more or less points well i want enough for it to be nice and round and smooth i'll make it 72 it's a number I kind of like for this sort of thing. And this looks good. So again, it is closed on all sides. If I would just go into the normal MakerWare settings and print this out, we would have a, you know, a little boxy cylinder shape. I'll go export, file, export, STL. This is going to be my cup. Export the STL. We now have the base models. Let's go into MakerWare and import them there. We are now back in MakerWare and I'll assume you have printed something through this piece of software before. So we'll go through it a little bit quickly. Um, first, let's add our box to it. I click on add, select the box on my desktop and add it. Now it's asking me whether I want to put the object on the platform because in Blender I didn't move the object, I didn't put it where I want it, I didn't scale it. You can already see it's put it here, it's really really tiny and it's 
halfway down into the platform you know what i'll just move it to the platform it's asking me whether i want to scale up the object because in blender we had two by two by two units initially makerware thinks i'm working in millimeters that is pretty much the standard but it sees our object is two by two by two millimeters and that is really a bit too tiny for the 3d printer i'm working with so they're estimating you're probably not working in millimeters. They think we are working in inches. So it is rescaling it for me to inches. So we now have a cube that is two by two by two inches large, which is fine by me. Um, I don't want to move it. I don't need to scale it. I can select it and set the right color or set it to be uh, printed with the right extruder. It's all already there. I'm pretty happy. So we can go straight to making it. I'm not going to change the model itself. It's going to stay a big closed cube. I'm just going to tell the printer how to slice it for me. So we will make and in the make window, you can see I have a replicator dual. That's the replicator one. I want to export it to a file. I don't have my replicator connected via USB cable because the USB cable is a little bit unreliable. The speed is too slow. And uh, if your computer goes to sleep halfway through the printing process, it's not that nice. So in my case, I always go to SD card, put that in the printer and have it print from the SD card. It's really the most reliable way to do it. Um, I'm using PLA because that is the uh, recyclable plastic. It's nice for doing experiments. I don't feel so guilty about putting plastic in the environment. Um, and in this case, we want to go into the advanced options. So we go to the advanced options. You have a bunch of settings here, like the number of shells and the infill, but these are not close enough to what I want. I want to go into my own profile. So I will click on create a new profile, create profile, and then select the template to start from. In this case, I'm doing PLA. I don't need high detail or low detail. I'll just use the MakerBot Slicer standard PLA template and I will give it a name. So I will call this my box profile and create it. Now it's made the profile for me and you can see there are no settings in here. If we want to change the settings, we have to edit the profile in the middle bottom. So I will go edit the profile and you see the computer tries to open a file called miracle.json. Now JSON file is basically uh, related to JavaScript. It is normally used on the web, but they use it for this here as well. It's possible that your computer has no idea what to do with the JSON file. It might be asking you how to open this file or what to open it with. If so, just use your basic notepad. Don't use anything that adds styles like WordPad or Word. Just use the most basic notepad text editor you have. In my case, I use Notepad++, which is an open source Windows editor. It's basically a notepad that adds some fancy colors and some extra features like the number of the line I'm working with. So these, what we're looking at now, are all the settings. Next step, let's go look through these settings and figure out what we want to change. So we made the text a little bit bigger, so it's easier to read for everyone. Um, in this case, I'm looking for a view, very specific advanced settings. If you want to know what all these settings mean, find one that seems really, really specific to MakerBot, like a rapid move feed rate XY, copy it, then go to Google, I'll go home, and in Google, enter that and search, and you will see at the very top, it gives you the MakerBot slicer options from makerbot.com. So if you want to find out what all of these settings mean, Go here and you can find detailed information on all of it. And it's very easy to find, especially if you look for something very abstract, which there is a lot of. So we're in here and I'm only looking for the things that are relevant to what I'm doing. I don't care about layer heights. I want to keep pretty much everything completely standard. So I will go look for the number of shells. 
that's really important it defines the thickness of the outside of your cup i'm going to leave it at two because it's nice and thin it prints very quick it's a little bit flexible and it looks kind of cool um, then we go down a little bit the roof thickness is very relevant because in this case we have a closed box but i don't want to print the roof so the th thickness should be 0, 0.0 and another way to say the same thing is to enable the layer count so i will remove underscore disabled just delete it from the file and set the roof layer count to zero that way no roof layers will be created so we will have an open top container you can do this with any print but for a container it's incredibly handy um, the floor thickness we can just leave because i do want to have a bottom in my cup we'll leave it the way it is then we go to the infill the infill is really important because normally it creates a grid on the inside of your model that creates support for the roof but we don't have a roof and we don't want any infill because i want to put stuff in my cup and if there's a, a grid pattern there we can't so the infill density we will set to 0.0, .0. that way we have no infill and it's completely open we should be pretty much done here the only thing i want to make sure is enabled is the do raft in my case i like rafts because it makes it easy to detach your model from uh, the platform in your printer um, and it's nice and flat and it works well so it's set to true already i will leave it at true we are done at this point i can simply save the file so remember all we're doing is we're setting the roof to zero or the roof layers to zero after we enabled them and we're setting the infill density to 0, 0.0 the infill density you could already set in your normal advanced settings but the roof you can't so we've set all this up we can go back into MakeAware it saved it on my disk that's what MakeAware is using we have the profile still selected and we can go straight to export it will go to my SD card it's called box.x 3g that is fine i can save and replace because i already had one there and because it's such a simple little box it's just a cube it's already sliced it by now and it's on there let's do the same thing for the cylinder to make a cup so i will add the round cup yes move it to the platform yes rescale it so now we have a two inch tall round uh, cylinder we go to make it and because i already made the profile i don't need to change anything i can just select it in the profiles and go straight to export we only have to do this once so we call this the cup.x3g hit enter replace the one i already had this one takes a little bit longer to slice but not that much um, after this we can just take the sd card put it in the MakerBot, and go to 3d print with the end result i have a nice little square box a little bit flexible and a round cup you see we can bend it they are both printed in a transparent pla in this case uh, that's a nice first look at the advanced settings of MakerWare. took me a year to figure out i could just use a cube and a cylinder so i hope i helped you get there a little bit sooner thank you for joining me